Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Belt. My name is Kelly. I'm Trevor. Hey, today we're getting the trucks tuned. The 4Runner and the Tacoma are gonna be badass in two quick steps. Stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm here with Justin from Mobile Antics. And Justin, you do cartooning, and I'm hoping that you can fix my Tacoma. Yeah, we can absolutely handle that today. All right, so the issues I'm having with the Tacoma, and I'm sure Trev is having some similar issues, but obviously me specifically with the 35s and the gear change, my issues are it's always searching for gears. Like it's still gear hunting, even with the gear change, and it's not powerful uh, off takeoff from a zero to 60 acceleration. Um, and it just doesn't feel powerful on the trail. It's not torquey. I don't feel like I have a lot of power at hand. Yeah, so those are common issues with the 3.5 liter Tacoma. Uh, unfortunately, uh, whether you have a 2016 or a 2022, they all come off the line with a really crappy um, stock tune. And so some of the main things that we're trying to address with the tune are A, we want to increase the torque. So we want to get that power back. So think about when you're driving and you're trying to get off of the start line at a stop sign or at a red light and it just won't move or you're on the freeway and you're trying to pass somebody at 85 and it just won't move. Um, we want to fix that. And so with the Yoda works tunes that we flash here at Mobile Antics, uh, you're going to get increased torque. So we actually did a dyno yesterday with a customer on a stock 2022 uh, running regular fuel. And you can see on the on the graph, uh, between the 2,000 and 4,000 RPM range, which is that low end, which is where you want these improvements, you can see a drastic gain in torque. And so that's gonna give you that power that you need when you're coming off the line, when you're trying to pass a truck uh, or another car. Second thing you mentioned was that uh, gear hunting, which is the common, the, the most common thing that people say they have issues with. Uh, and it's really just the Tacoma, um, it has executive privilege to choose whatever gear it wants. So we're used to linear shifting, where if you're in second, it's gonna to go to third, third to fourth. Well, in the Gen 3, it can do, uh, in, in the Gen 3, it can do whatever it wants. And so what we've done is we've completely remapped the shift tables so that you get that linear shifting. And it's quicker, it's smoother, and honestly, when you drive it, like that gear hunting goes away. It's a huge improvement. Well, that's what I'm looking for. So let's hope all those problems are solved. I'd be a very, very happy dude. Yep, I think you will be. We don't have any customers who haven't been satisfied so far. So. Good to know. Yeah. All right, so now specifically, let's nerd out just a, just a minute here. Exactly what does a tune do? Yeah, it's a great question. So what we do is we flash tune. So you know your truck has what's called an ECU, which is an engine control unit, and that's basically the brains of the computer um, that tells the vehicle what to do uh, with certain aspects of, of how the vehicle runs. And so what we do is we have a, a software which contains the actual tune files, we have a cord that plugs into the OBD port, which is that it's a white plug underneath your steering column. We plug into that. It tells us what ECU ID you're on. So every vehicle comes off the factory line with its own ECU ID. Depending on the model year, there might be only one. If it's a 2022 and if it's a 2016, there might be three or four. So we'll check to see which uh, ECU ID you're on. If you're not on a current one, we will actually do a Toyota service bulletin update. We're gonna be using the exact same software that the Toyota tech would use to get you on the current ECU ID. Once we do that, we have a matching tune file um, for that ECU, and it's spec'd out exactly for what you want your vehicle to do. So if you've got 529 gears, it's gonna be spec'd to that. If you've got 35 inch tires, it's gonna be spec'd to that. It's also gonna be spec'd to that ECU ID. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically, using VF Tuner software, that's the company that, uh, that I'm a pro tuner for, uh, we're gonna actually basically transfer that file through that, uh, that cord into your OBD port and onto that ECU, and we're gonna rewrite the contents of it. It literally takes to do a TSB update and the actual flash, you're looking at 10 to 15 minutes time. It's, it's super pains. Awesome. And now I'm sure what everyone wants to know is how much does something like this cost? Yeah, so uh, for the Yoda Works tunes that I tune on, uh, you're looking at $450 for a Tacoma, and then that pricing can range anywhere from four to 500 depending on the vehicle. So we can flash the GX460, the 5.7 liter Tundra, which would be the 2007 to 2021 model, the Gen 3 Tacoma, so 2016 to 2022, and then the 4Runner, the 4.0, so that's gonna be 2010 to 2019. And then there's always, ish sometimes there can be issues if the ID isn't supported. So what we'll do for anything that isn't a Tacoma is we'll meet up, uh, we'll plug in, we'll see what ID you're on, and we'll check to make sure there's support. If there is, we can create tune packs for it. Excellent. And what about the newer Tundra and 4Runner owners out there? 
do you have something for them or is it gonna be something that's in the future? Uh, in the future. So a good example of that would be the Yoda Works Forerunner tunes, which are really, really good. And speaking of that, you had mentioned that earlier, you know, that we know that the 3.5 liter Tacoma has just a ton of issues right out of the gates. The, the stock tune, factory tune for the Forerunner is a lot better, but what I think a lot of people don't understand is you can get gains out of that as well. Um, and so we know for our 20, uh, 2020 and up customers, we know it's frustrating not having it, but it is on uh, kind of on the roadmap, so to speak. We will be eventually having support for that through VF Tuner and then subsequently tune packs. So. All right, let's talk numbers. What numbers, horsepower and torque, are Trevor and I looking at with these tunes for the Tacoma and the 4Runner? Yeah, so on the dyno that we did yesterday, it was around 30, 35 oh, wow. uh, yeah, foot per pound increase. And again, that's gonna be in the low end. So what you've gotta remember with these tunes, there are a lot of different tunes on the market. If you've, if you've gone down the Tacoma World Rabbit Hole, you've probably been hearing all kinds of different names and it gets very confusing. At the end of the day, OV Tuner, VF Tuner is what started all of this. They provide the tuning software and they're the ones who built the original tune packs. And what has happened since then is tuners have been able to take that baseline tune and edit it to make different improvements. So unless you're using a very unreputable company who doesn't know what they're doing, you're getting different flavors of tune. And so with Yoda Works, we knew we wanted to put that power and the lower power bands where you're gonna need it, that two to 4,000 RPM. Uh, you know, other companies may have put that in the upper uh, RPM band. So you know, it may be worth asking if they have a dyno chart you can look at and then you know educating yourself and learning maybe how to read it. But yeah, if you look at ours, 2000 to 4000, especially right at that 3500, that's where you're going to see the biggest increase. And it's about 30 from that dyno yesterday. From a horsepower perspective, these tunes really aren't meant, they're not a supercharger. Right. They're not meant to give you a ton of horsepower gain. I think you're going to look at, you're looking at anywhere between five to seven, but again, that's going to be in the lower power bands. If you look at our dyno chart, you will see after about 4,000 RPM, the stock tune is going to be higher uh, horsepower, but you don't really need that after six. I mean, I don't know how often you're driving around at 6,000 RPM, but I don't do that often. And if you are, probably means you need to get tuned. Yeah, so. for sure. Well, I'm excited about it. I know that a lot of my driving, like you said, is in that lower, lower uh, RPM range for off-roading and that's what my truck does. So this is gonna be great. Hopefully it fixes all those issues. So Justin, do you, is there any other options for the tune or is it only the one tune? So we offer two options uh, uh, for the Yoda Works tuning. We offer a weekend warrior tune and an active duty tune. So the guys who run Yoda Works are based out of El Paso. There's an army base near there. So that's the, in, the, the inspiration behind those names. But really the two big differences, they're both gonna have you know, smoother shifting. They're gonna have that increased torque. You're gonna get rid of the low RPM dead pedal. All those things will come with both. But the biggest difference is really the throttle between the two. So my recommendation is, so a weekend warrior is gonna be someone who's totally stock. Uh, or has some upgrades, but not enough weight to warrant the aggressive throttle that the active duty has. For some reference, I drive a 2017 Tacoma. I'm re-geared. I have probably 500 pounds of additional weight with a ARE shell and a, a front runner roof rack. I've got sliders and I've got an engine skid. Um, I run the Weekend Warrior and I'm perfectly happy with it. I ran active duty for about a thousand miles and it was just too aggressive for my style. Um, so Weekend Warrior is gonna be, again, less aggressive throttle. Active duty is for that person who has a ton of weight. So you've got full skids, front and rear bump. Yeah, so <laughs> Kelly's got 2,000 pounds added. There's actually no question which tune he's gonna get. It's just, that's enough weight, it warrants the active duty. So, but yeah, if you've got all those different, you know, steel components that's adding to that weight, or if you've got some of that, like let's say you've got 500 pounds like me, but you really enjoy an extremely aggressive throttle, active duty is the way to go. But I'm telling you, on, on they will both get going a lot quicker, but the active duty is on a whole new level. So Kelly, with the weight he's got on his truck, he is gonna notice that this thing moves. Like I'm telling you, like right out of the gate. So that's the biggest difference. It's weekend Warrior, Active Duty, they're both the same cost, but you have that choice along with the specs for your vehicle, like tire size, uh, gears, fuel usage, et cetera. Awesome. And then what would you suggest, like we both have gear changes. Yep. Would you suggest any other mods before you do the tune? Or do you say, do all your mods and then get the tune. Uh, so I would say, it, you know, 
I have I've spent six years and a lot of money uh, upgrading my truck. I would say if I could go, yeah, uh, and it seems to never end because there's plenty of options for the Tacoma uh, and there's constantly new products coming out of the market. But I would say, you know, if talking about the re-gear, you know, I re-geared in December of 2019 and I got tuned the following year. If I could go back, I probably would have done a tune first. I mean, 450 bucks to improve the drivability of the vehicle might have made me go, you know what, I don't know if I need a re-gear, um, but I'll never know that because I did the re-gear first. So I would say if you're on a budget and three, you know, two, 3,000 bucks for a re-gear just isn't in the cards for you or the wife's saying no, uh, or heck, the, a husband is saying no, um, I would say go with the tune first, see how you like it, and then make that decision. Uh, that would be my opinion. All right, the tuning is all done. Tacoma 4Runner complete. Let's go out. We're going to redo the hot laps and the hill climb, and hopefully we get some results. If not, this guy's in big trouble. Yeah, yeah. I promise you, it'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, do it. Ah, you were about to yeah. steal. All right, Justin, right here in the desert, we're about to do our hot laps. What can we expect out of these rigs with the tune now? Yeah, so first thing you're going to notice is that uh, that throttle. So both of these being on active duty, these trucks are going to get up and go literally the second you start to even feather that gas pedal. Second thing is you're gonna feel that torque and that power in those low RPMs. So as you guys gas it and start going down the road, you're gonna feel that power and the ability to get up and go. Um, and then yeah, on open stretches, that shifting is gonna be a lot smoother. You're not gonna get that constant up and down shifting. It's gonna know how to hold gears. Perfect, yeah, I kinda noticed a little bit of that just driving over here from the house. Yeah. And you're right, there's definitely more power available at hand and it, the shifting was much cleaner, much, yep. much cleaner. Yep. Yeah, one of the things I noticed that I have not done since my truck was stock is I was actually able to use cruise control on an incline. Normally I think just revs up really high and I gotta shut it off because it just stays there. Yeah, so, all right, let's do these hot laps and let's get some numbers to, uh, you know, quantify this, this tune. Yep. Awesome, let's do it. Unfortunately, I have lost all of the video from those hot laps, but stick around to the end because I have a 500 mile review. I just got back from Colorado, so I have highway, road, and trail up in the mountains for a good review. Stick around to the end for that. So my initial impression of the tune, just pulling out of the neighborhood is the, f the feel right off the takeoff was so much, is like a significant power gain on the low end. Like I just, I didn't feel like the engine had to rev up so high. I felt the power go all the way through and the shift points were noticeably better. I mean, that was, I mean, I, I really like this tune. I like what it's offering. And the, the only thing that I noticed was the lap times were just a little bit less, or I'm, I'm sorry, slower than, than what was before. Can you explain why that would be? Yeah, absolutely. So you're spot on with the that initial power feel. So uh, for you guys, if you guys recall from earlier in the video, um, Kelly is running the active duty tune. So we have two tune options. Active duty is going to be a really aggressive throttle. Uh, he's running about 2,000 pounds of extra weight, and that's a lot to get moving. So the active duty's got a throttle that's going to immediately get that truck moving, and that's why Kelly is able to press the accelerator and immediately get going. That low end torque is there. Um, and then the shift points, that's really the main reason that you're tuning. You're trying to get rid of that, um, that gear hunting. That's a very popular term that people mention all the time. The truck just doesn't know what gear to be in and we've smoothed all of that out. Related to the lap time, so you guys wanna keep in mind, you know, these are what we call a butt dyno. You're really just going off a of feel, but these lap times, uh, it was really to see you know, how fast we can move and those times are slower. Um, fortunately, yesterday we ran uh, a dyno on this particular tune. And something to keep in mind, if you look at the dyno graph, which will be shared in the video, you're going to see all of the additional torque and additional horsepower is gonna be found in that two to 4,000 RPM range. So again, that low end. And you're gonna see the biggest difference right about 3,500 RPM, where you're gonna see the power shift where stock is more than the tune is above 5,000 RPM. So if you think about doing a hot lap and you're gassing the pedal and you're getting up to a really high RPM to get up to speed, that's where that difference is. That's where stock is actually gonna beat it. And we're okay with that. We put the power down low because that's the RPMs that most people are driving at. If you're driving at 6,000 RPM, most of the time there's something wrong with your truck uh, or you're going up hills all the time. So we're, so we're totally okay with that. And again, you can look at that dyno graph to really see where those differences are. But like you said, the feel of it is, it feels more powerful. It feels like it wants to go. It doesn't, it's not lagging to go, it wants to go. And again, the shift points, if this tune only fixed the shift points, which it did, it is completely worth it because my truck just feels like it's 
moving through the gears naturally. It's not like hunting, it's not searching, it's not trying to skip through, it's not back paddling into a set lower gear to get that RPM range up higher. It's just mo smoothly going through the gears, which is really nice. Yep, and the reality is as uh, kind of most of us are weekend warriors and you know, most of us will not put our trucks on a dyno. So although we do have some of that dyno science to back up why you're feeling power, or where you're feeling it, at the end of the day, uh, when I tune folks, uh, you know, they tell me, hey, it just drives better and I can tell. Um, and so uh, that's, you know, nine and a half out of 10 people, they're feeling those differences right away. And that's what matters. If you're, the drivability of your truck uh, just gets better right out of the gates, that's why you buy the tune and that's what makes it feel like a good investment. Yeah, and the numbers really just quantify for you guys what it's actually doing. And it's hard for me to tell you exactly what my feeling is compared to what you're going to feel when you do the tune. The numbers kind of quantify that, but at the same time, the feel is what I really care about. That is my personal, I want it to feel more powerful and I want it to feel a smoother acceleration. So it, it's checking all the boxes for what I was looking for in a tune. Yep, absolutely. All right, so the only other thing was the hill climb, and that was where I noticed it was a minuscule difference, but that low end torque, the truck wasn't struggling at all to get up the hill. It just kind of slowly, even sticking at that 1000 RPM range, it just kind of crawled up super slowly. And that was really very smooth. And you add into that 488 or 529 gears and, and you're really able to, to make that thing crawl at a snail's pace when you're out on the trail. You guys have got to check out this tune. It is super cool. Justin, what is this tune exactly? Like, what is it? Yeah, so my company is called Mobile Antics LLC. So I'm based here in Arizona. I pretty much tune all over the state, mostly Phoenix, but I do make trips to Flagstaff and Tucson. Uh, and I am an authorized Yoda Works uh, tuning partner. So Yoda Works is who built these tunes. They're built off of the, what everybody terms the OV or the orange virus tunes. Um, that's the baseline for it. And then we have folks who are smarter than me who have gone in and edited these tunes to really refine them. So Yoda Works is the tune. Uh, it's our most recent Blackhawk update. Uh, and yeah, again, Mobile Antics, Justin Turner, uh, www.mobileantics.com. If you want to set up an appointment, feel free. And I'll have all that information in the description below. Be sure to check that out. And if you guys like the video, hit that thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, helps the channel grow. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks. I just got back from a Colorado trip. I drove from Arizona to Colorado. That was all freeway. Uh, the Yoda Works Mobile Antics tune did great on the freeway. And I, I did not write down the numbers, but I feel like I got better mileage out of the tuned Tacoma over stock form. Then I went into the mountains where I did a lot of backcountry trails and then got up into the big peaks where I did eight different mountain passes, well over 12,000 feet and the truck performed much, much better. There's much more available power in the low range. So overall, the highway performance went up. I feel like I got better gas mileage. I don't have the numbers to quantify that. However, I feel like I did. And then being up in the mountains, up in those big passes where the air's thin, I got a lot more power in the low range. You know, being a four wheel low, crawling up those big mountain passes, definitely a huge improvement.